Hello everyone, Mecha here, along with Mangs. Hi! Hi! And today I thought we would do something different. We're just gonna talk about Iron Man's, because we've both been doing them for a little while, and uh, I thought it'd be nice to just get together and talk for a little bit without that pesky gameplay interrupting us all the time. Because some people have been requesting kind of a video like that. And uh, one thing that we have in common that we've been doing for a while is we do these Iron Man streams where you mm -hmm. play the game, everyone watches, and if someone dies, you can't reset. You can't reset, period. And for some reason that makes Fire Emblem a lot better. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about like why it's so fulfilling, uh, what games are the best and worst for Iron Man's, what were the worst deaths you experienced, uh, worst game overs perhaps even. Like just ramble a bit about past experiences. So that's what you can expect for today. So first question is basically why do you think it works so well for Fire Emblem to play without resetting? It's kind of weird. So I used to play a game called uh, XCOM mm -hmm. a lot. Well, that's the origin of the name, is... right? Uh, yeah, X XCOM, yeah, was the first game that actually included an Iron Man setting. It's a game, it's very similar to Fire Emblem, it's a tactical turn-based uh, game, except that you shoot aliens instead of fighting with swords. Uh, but it's very similar, your units level up, you kill enemies, it's very strategic. It's not as RPG-ish, your soldiers are more like anonymous, but mm -hmm. you can give them names and they, they do start taking on personalities of their own. And okay, so it's when not I played exactly XCOM, like Advance Wars, right? It's more like... Yeah, yeah, okay. it's, 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 it's a grid-based grid tactical system. Okay. It's very similar to, to Fire Emblem. It even has an RNG system when you shoot, it's like oh. a hit chance and stuff. <laughs> so it's very similar. And, um, well, I played that a lot, and then I noticed there was this little Iron Man option. I was like, what's this? I was like, oh, it, you can't load your saves? Game <laughs> over? Like, you lose? I was like, oh, interesting. And I started playing that, and I was like, holy shit, this makes the game a million times more fun. Because instead of just loading whenever I lose, I actually have to like play perfectly from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And then just, I think I watched your Tracia Iron Man, and I was like, hmm. Yeah. Well, I Fire Emblem is very... I Iron Man that game at least three times already. <laughs> I, yeah, I did and, it and a I, lot. And I, and I looked at it and I was like, hmm, Iron Man, XCOM, Fire Emblem, very similar. Probably will work similarly, I guess. And uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but well, actually, I do know a little bit yeah. of what it is. But it's 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 okay. I, I really hate saying this, but your choices really matter. <laughs> it's true, it though. It, it ups the stakes a lot. I feel like it ups the, ups the stakes a lot, and it takes away a lot of tedium from playing Fire Emblem too. I think that's also a big point that we haven't really never really brought up in like Q and As and just random discussions. Like if you play Fire Emblem and you fill out a map, usually the feeling you get. It's like, oh, fuck, I have to play this all over again, and I just have to yeah. repeat myself a lot. It's Iron worst. Man, you play every map once, and that's it. So you go through it pretty quickly, you just, you have to cope with losses along the way. Also, if you, uh, if you lose some, this is something that I've noticed since playing a lot of Fire Emblem, is that if you, if you don't play an Iron Man, and yeah. you lose a unit, and you keep playing, your audience will hate you. Especially yeah. if, especially if you lose a very popular character. Yeah. Or like that one and character that like almost nobody likes, but there's always like one or two people who really like that one niche character. Because basically, what you're what, what you're saying to your audience is, I don't care enough about this character to replay, yeah. and that offends them greatly. And <laughs> so, um, you know, you're stuck in this horrible dilemma: Do I spend a lot of time playing this chapter again, or do I piss off a large chunk of my audience? <laughs> With Iron Man, you don't get that. I mean, they might still get a little mad at you, but. Like, they understand that it's an Iron Man and that you didn't necessarily mean to kill their character, that you just messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's to the... It's, like, part of the challenge at that point, so it's expected that you lose characters. But, like, yeah, I remember people even got, like, slightly mad, I think. I think Violent might have died in your first Shadow Dragon run or something. We were like, nah, whatever, we just keep going. Something like that. I don't remember yeah. for sure. I remember a lot of people got pissed when um, Har died in, um, in 2E <laughs> of the Radiant Dawn playthrough, I think. Uh, yeah, that got a lot of people really mad. Jill dying, but she died live on stream. But it wasn't the Iron Man. It was just like playing regularly. I'm like, nah, you just leave her dead, whatever. And then people like shot like leaving dislikes. I, I definitely recommend you unsubscribe that. because unsubscribe. <laughs> like, but unironically, <laughs> I know, right? I would like to point out that there are like there are two different ways of Iron Manning because the ones you did first, although I don't think it ever came into no, effect, never was came you out. said that if you lose your main character, you'll kill off a character and restart. Yeah, a random character. Uh, that I, I'd like to call it like soft Iron Manning and hard Iron Manning, mm -hmm. where it's like soft Iron Manning, you if you get a game over, you still replay. Yeah. Hard Iron Manning is like you commit yourself to one playthrough, and if you do a game over, the the the, the playthrough literally ends, yeah. which is. I would like to point out that this really works best for streaming. I 
don't... I could never see myself making a, an Iron Man Let's Play. It just wouldn't work the same way. It requires an audience, I think. Yeah, the audience... But if you, if you, if, yeah. but if you do a Let's Play, then I think a soft Iron Man is preferable, probably. Uh, possibly. I can see it work either way. You just, uh, I, I do agree right now that, like, soft Iron Man, there's almost no point to it anymore, because... Like, Hard Iron Man, it, it turns out it's pretty beatable for most games, and it's more fun, adds more stakes. And if you get a game over, whatever, you can try again the same game just at a later point. So it's not a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal to lose a run, but it's more fun that way than to actually have a condition where you reset, because ideally you just reset zero times. And yeah, you're yeah, right, it I... never came up during my IV5 Iron Man runs. Like, Leaf never died, I made sure to keep him safe. And I also gave him, like, a bunch of... Uh, Stat boosts at the time, I think. Oh, actually, I don't think mm -hmm. I did, but it was just not that hard to keep him safe. L Leaf, Leaf is not that hard to keep alive. No, it, it does um, help if you give him a lot of defensive stat boosts, though. But you're right, he's he's pretty good for keeping alive, especially since he doesn't need to fight much in the mid game. Uh, I I would like to point out that the reason why I why I decided to do hard Iron Man is because I saw a little bit of a problem in that. Let's say you lose. Yeah, let's say you lose five characters during a map. Yeah, it's almost it's almost tempting to just sack your main character. It is take take to death and revive those five guys, which I found that to be a bit of a it's a loophole. Conundrum. Right. I it's don't... a loophole. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do hard Iron Man, where if I if I get a game over, also because I'm a shameless gambler and I just <laughs> really enjoy high stakes. <laughs> I I will say though, um, I never had the plan to uh, revive units like that. I think what I would have done is like say I lose like five guys and then leaf. I would reset, purposely kill off the five guys and then leaf, but it does feel make it feel like a lot less genuine. So I'm glad that I um, I will now from future from future I'll always do hard Iron Man. In fact I think whenever whenever anyone says Iron Man they'll they just think of hard Iron Man. I don't think soft Iron Man is even really a thing anymore anywhere yeah. ever. But I think I think one more reason that like the upping of the stakes is so nice is because it gives a lot more meaning to like the death of a character, not like someone you don't really care about, like um, someone like Violent or someone like I don't know, maybe not Trek or Noah, but like some kind of more generic like characters. It doesn't really add too much to them. But when one of the favorites dies, it's like oh no, <laughs> no, mm -hmm. and I think that really it like really attaches you more to the characters, which is kind of like a cliche thing to do or like a cliche thing to say, but. When they can actually die, and it has permanent consequences, it's so much better, because it really makes you appreciate what you have, and then what you had when you actually lose them. It's it's so weird, and so... So, a little while back, Marky Joe made a wonderful video about um, how Kaga intentionally wanted you to play the game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, when they go back to the Arcanea games, they're a little puzzled by all the the weird concept that you seem to get your best units early on, mm -hmm. and then the units that join after that are kind of like bad replacements, yeah. which is a little weird. Like, why does Caesar join after Ogma? Ogma's way better than Caesar. Why, wouldn't it make sense for Caesar to join first and then get Ogma later? Uh, but no, uh, the reason why Kaga designed the game this way is that if you keep your initial units alive, you get good units. If you let them die, you get replacement units that are a little bit worse, but still usable in their own right. And how he wanted you to play the game was to actually keep playing, not reset. And just keep, like, he literally wanted you to Iron Man. He wanted you to play, maybe not like hard Iron Man, but he wanted you to play a style of Iron Man, which is why he made these replacement characters. Now, of course, this didn't turn out this way, because turns out people get very attached to their characters and mm -hmm. they reset if they die. But I, I mean, it sounds very cliche, and everyone knows I'm no, like like, relentless Kaga fanboy, but, so, when I say that I think this is how Fire Emblem was intended to be played, uh, not necessarily saying that this is how everyone should play Fire Emblem, but I think why it's so gratifying is because this is how the game was probably meant to be played, from a design perspective, and when I play through it like that, it makes me appreciate the game in a completely different way, because every choice you make matters, mm -hmm. every death feels impactful, when a character is good and you get attached to them, you actually feel like you probably would feel in real life if you were commanding this army. They are your soldiers, you want to keep them alive. And the fear of them dying, you know, makes you appreciate them more. Yeah, that and like you, you invested a lot in these characters. They like they got a bunch of experience, maybe like stat boosters and uh, promotion items, that kind of stuff. And when you lose that in addition as well, especially if, if, like, if you lose them right after the investment, it feels terrible, absolutely horrible. It's like, yeah. no, that's like a part. And like, the way people play Fire Emblem now, especially like modern Fire Emblem, use like a small team of people, and if one of them dies, that's like a big chunk of your resources gone. Whereas, yeah. I feel like the very old Fire Emblems were almost designed 
effect where you use almost any everyone if you want to. You can just swap them around. Because like if you play a game like FE1 or FE3 Book 1 or something, you'll find that like all the enemies, they're super easy to beat if you have like a growth unit leveled up all the way. They just yes. go right through. But in the, the old games weren't intended to be played with like a super team like that, but more like you just pick whatever the best characters for whatever mm -hmm. um, chapter. And I think that really ties into something else I wanted to like bring up is like I feel like the old games, they were probably, like Kaga intended, um, designed to be played Iron Man. Maybe not FE4. And I think FE4 might be a bit of an exception, but like FE1, FE2, FE3, FE5 especially, uh, they were kind of designed like that. I feel like the more modern a Fire Emblem game you, you take as an example, the less Iron Man y they are designed. I feel like Awakening and Three Houses especially have this. I don't think those games oh, are yeah, very no, well no. designed for Iron Man. I think they're, they're very. They're more designed around that whole small army thing, getting really attached to certain characters and just reset every time they die. And I remember actually a, um, an interview about Shadow Dragon, I think. Uh, they were talking about Shadow Dragon pre-release, and they added the reclass feature. And they talked about how the developers would always reset if their favorite character died. And it's, uh, that's that's actually their philosophy now. So their philosophy, their design philosophy has just consistently, um, like as confirmed to be changed, you know? They no longer design games to be Iron Man. They design games for people to keep their units, favorite units alive for as long as possible. And rightly so, because that makes complete sense to me, because, I mean, when Kaga designed the game this way, he didn't take into account human nature. <laughs> like, pe people get attached to their characters, and that's just how human psychology works. So designing a game to be Iron Man, it will not work. This is why it's such a unique experience. I kind of feel like when I'm Iron Manning, I'm playing Fire Emblem in a way that most people would never play Fire Emblem, and that actually is what makes it feel so unique. Um, but it requires you to go against your own nature. Like, it requires you to go... To play to, to play and enjoy an Iron Man requires you to completely rethink the way you play Fire Emblem. And not get too... Well, you still you will get attached. It's kind of like you're... You're... you're intentionally hurting yourself almost it, it's weird um but it's but it's also very rewarding yeah absolutely it's like in three houses for example if you if you recruit someone from another house and then you put like a bunch of gardening staff pieces into them and then you like start tutoring them forever you're not doing that you can't really do that with the idea that i might lose that character so you have to be no. very careful about them and like the game is divine pulse that's like the most anti-iron man feature that's ever existed and then you get like yeah. awakening where uh, I feel like no matter how you play that as an Iron Man run, in the end it's gonna devolve into Robin solos the game because you almost you get Pretty almost much. no units that are good from off the start. Uh, all units are very front loaded, and every unit that joins early cannot just step in late in the game and be viable. You actually have to train them up or like grind them up on the map or something, which mm -hmm. tends to be pretty hard on higher difficulties. And it's just a Robin snowball fest, almost no matter what you do. And I remember watching your Iron Man and being like, "Well, even if he loses like good units, it's not gonna impact anything as long as Robin is able to just solo everything." It just yeah. The, it just the only matter. reason why I why I even lost that was because I reclassed Robin to a flyer and yeah. just <laughs> forgot about it. Bow unit, like it's. I could have probably soloed that entire playthrough. Yeah. With Robin, if I just stayed a stayed a ground unit, probably yeah. it, it would have taken a while. But like, like, like you said, some people do enjoy playing the game like that and just moving Robin and we're gonna no one else and just stomping through the game. I enjoy playing the game like that sometimes, but it doesn't really have anything to do with strategy. It's kind of just either you're doing it to read the story or you find it fulfilling to watch someone stomp through the game, and that's all the pleasure you need from this game. But at the core, I feel like Fireman works best when it's actually a game that forces you to use strategies. And Iron Man has forced me to use some ridiculously weird strategies all over the place. I can't think of one example off the top of my head, but I've done like, some weird rescue drops and like trade strats, using like super unique items that you'd never use otherwise. And when, when a unit's life is at stake, and it's not just like, oh, if I don't do this, I might have to reset. It's more like, if I don't do this, my unit might die and I lose access to them all the way. You start to have to think of like really weird strats that suddenly... Well, like you know, rescuing uh, the Pontifex on FE8 into the treasure chamber. Oh, yeah. Like... That was something I've done before, but it was really fun. I actually almost forgot to lift him over. <laughs> I, was like, I was like halfway to the treasure room in FE8 in Chapter 19, the last hope chapter with Reeve, all the promoted enemies in the dark. And my plan was, well, I could either defend this, this middle point where you start with all the choke points, or I could move to the treasure room and just defend one choke point. I'll just do the latter. Because I want to spend a while on the map. I don't think I could have... Or I could me. use the rescue stuff. Yeah, or just rescue command in this case. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a strategy, all right. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was not very corona-friendly, but it was, uh, it was worth <laughs> it. I did survive in the end. 
So there are definitely different Fire Emblem games that are, work differently in terms of Iron Manning. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely, I'd say the older the game, the more the better it is for Iron Manning. With, with of course, as you said, maybe the exception being at yeah. E4. Yeah, However, I have recently found a modern Fire Emblem game that is excellent for Iron Manning, and it's the game that I'm Iron Manning right now. Conquests actually turned out to be one of the most fun Iron Mans I've ever attempted thus far. Um, because Conquest is a little bit of an anomaly in that it really doesn't... Like, it really plays a lot very differently from the other modern Fire Emblem games. It's not as much uh, grinding up your units uh, to powerhouses and more about just, like, playing strategy... Playing well! Mm -hmm. uh, and the units that you get are all pretty viable. Like, I'd say Con the Conquest roster is pretty balanced across the board. They're, in, like, they're the Royals, who are a little bit better than the others, of course, but they're not... They can't just solo the game. Like, no, no single unit in Conquest can solo the game. That just doesn't work. Um, so, Conquest is actually wonderful for, for Iron Man, but I will uh, say that many of the other modern Fire Emblems are not great for it. Yeah, uh, from what I can see, I'm not, like, super experienced at Conquest yet, but from what I can see, it's like... The great thing about Conquest, like, units are very customizable, but you don't have to grind them to make them that way. No. They just, you can use, like, tonics and, like, very, a huge amount of different weapons. Uh, you can reclass them in some ways without having to grind them too much. You can pair them up to get, like, certain stat boosts. Uh, you can either leave them unpaired or pair them up with someone if that's what you prefer and what works best for a situation. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, you, you're still not likely to break the, the game with, like, Corrin, because Corrin is just not as ridiculous as Robin is. Even though, I mean, no. he's one of the best units, or she's one of the best units, but she's not. Oh yeah, no, no, for sure. Super but broken. and but like as much as I dislike the stat debuffs and all that, like stat debuffs, free stays, and uh, shurikens and poison strike is actually pretty sure those were were introduced to the game to prevent you from just soloing the game with one character. Yeah. Because you try to go through the game with Corrin, even if you max out Corrin, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get frozen, so you won't be able to move around. And then you're gonna get enfeebled. Then you're gonna get poison strike and debuffed, and yeah. you're just gonna get killed. And as much as I dislike those mechanics on paper, they are great for just re re like making you not be able to attempt a core in solo. Yeah, or like any kind of low man strategy that trivializes like the older farmers. That's one of the things Conquest does best. I think at times it adds tedium, but overall it works pretty well. It's it's very painful for Iron Man if it gets on the wrong side of you, but yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The yeah. the run that I'm on right now, I mean, it might be over by the time this comes out. For all I know, <laughs> uh, one mistake and my entire roster dies. Yeah, which is one mistake. I'm, to, be, to, be, to be fair, though, I am playing Lunatic, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. I could have done hard, and it would have been a challenge still. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you've done. Uh, let's see. You started with six, right? I think it's yeah. Uh, in September, and actually, I looked it up. You started with six in September. We're in, we're in March right now. So you've done yeah, six. Yeah, I think I, I think I actually went in Chronicle. I think I went six, seven, eight, nine. Um, no, I, I went. I went. I started with Fire Emblem Six, then I did Fire Emblem Seven, then I did Fire Emblem Eight. You then did, I like, did five um, between nine and, and eight. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I did Tracia too. That's right. Yeah. And Tracia, uh, Echoes, Adrian's Echoes, I think. Yeah. And a Shadow Dragon. I think that's the way it went. Shadow Dragon, yeah. And that's another one. Like Shadow Dragon again. That is probably the best game in the series, Darren Man. I think. I think the generics. Maybe not ruins Fire Emblem Iron Manning, but it definitely kind of hurt the fact that like, the fact that you could sacrifice bad units. Because you killed like a lot of units intentionally just to get more generics, I think. Or like uh, no, I did it to get the guy to right. But that's still like a game that's intentionally lets you kill characters is kind of weird for Iron Man. I do agree overall, it's it's good for Iron Man because it was based on FE1 and FE3, and those games were like definitely meant to be Iron Man. So the game kind of resembles a good Iron Man experience. But I think the generics and the guidance make it kind of weird. Uh, the, I think that huge death bit. counter you got would have been a lot more impactful if you hadn't been intentionally inten incentivized to kill units. But other than that, it was a very, very fulfilling Iron Man to watch, actually. I will actually say that uh, FE6 is also another great game yes. for Iron Manning, because I, one thing I've noticed is that with Iron Manning, you want a huge roster. Uh -huh. And also, what I think is nice about Iron Manning is that it's nice to have a varied roster which, like, with different powered units. One of the things I really like about FE6 is that the units are very widely different in their power scales. There are good units, there are bad units, there are god-awful units, and there are like really good units. Um, one of the problems I have with Modern Fire Emblem is that almost every character is viable. Like, they're all so similar in power level. Like. Especially in Awakening, like you can literally grind anyone to become a powerhouse. In FE6, you have some characters who are just terrible, like Lot and Wade. But in an Iron Man, Wendy. even those units <laughs> can be given. Yeah, Wendy. Even, even in Iron Man, even those units can be given a, a time to shine. And 
Man, when you make a terrible unit good in an Iron Man, holy crap, it feels like you've just cheated reality. It's <laughs> really... It's really... Because anyone can take Wendy, Lot, or Wade, or grind them up with arena and save states, right? Anyone can do that. But when you do it in an Iron Man, especially in front of a live crowd, man, it feels like you just... It feels like you hacked life. Yeah. It's really, really fulfilling. It's super. It's a super strange experience. I remember you did like lot and wait. I think partially because they built the support early and people just kind of like that. Yeah. Lot got like a bunch of defense level ups, and that's also like the f a fun thing about Fire Emblem when you just get I, a unit yeah. like that gets a good RNG roll somehow yes. and ends up really good. That's super fun. Like that's fast, also what like fast, good like in fast FE5. Bartra. <laughs> yeah, or like uh, yeah, Speedy Bartra for me in FE Seven. That was also another one of those. And then mm -hmm. for me, it was more like I just want to use Wendy to flex on Mangs. <laughs> <It's like> <laughs> <laughs> I ended up killing Zephiel with her. That was super weird. I actually never trained Wendy before, so that was extra fulfilling. She has awful hit rates on everything. It's super awful. And then like she like yeah six hit KOs enemies. <laughs> it was super weird. I think to it, use her. I think it's more the fact that lances and FE six are a lot more shit, and their hit yeah, rates have and enemies have more hit, avoid. Yeah. And I don't think Wendy's skill stat is the best either. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's she has like four base or something. Her stats are like if, if she joined in chapter one, she'd be mediocre. She joins in chapter eight instead. Yeah, yeah it's just absolutely horrendous, but definitely fun to use. I, I it's it, the, Iron Man's definitely make you reach for whatever it takes. In my case, in FE6, I was having a fairly easy time overall because it was kind of turtling, so I could do whatever mm -hmm. I wanted. So just spice it up. I used Wendy. I feel like in your case, you were oftentimes forced to use like weird units sometimes. Like in FE6, like half your roster was killed off at some point. You said like use like. Trek yeah, and I Noah started, and, like, Ilya or something, when they were, like, level yeah, 10 I started, or something. Yeah, I started using Trek, and he actually, like, became pretty good. They got yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I had a... I, I, I learned the hard way what happens when you... I played FE6. I had so much fun with that Iron Man that I played it despite being really tired. <laughs> so insta instead of just... Instead of just kind of, you know, um, realizing that I should just go to bed, what I did was I, um, I kept playing, which was a really bad idea. Yes. It was at times really infuriating to watch though, because I remember there was like one distinct uh, part in like Awakening, for example, you were doing like the military, and like at some point you were like, we gotta rush, we gotta go up, and you just move very on up, like in range of like three enemies or something. I was like, this is so fucking dumb, why would you do this? And you get away with it, and it's the worst feeling ever. It's like, I would never get away with doing that. He would just straight up die. One enemy is like, I could attack Virion, or I could attack the guy behind him and just ignore him and be like, well, whatever, it's, it's fine. To be fair, I, I, I kind of stopped caring halfway through the Awakening Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Can we talk about how FE7 is like supposedly easy, but we both failed at it? <laughs> uh, so FE7 <laughs> is the worst Iron Man experience. Both because, the worst, yeah. It's uh, terrible. There's so many things. First of all, in FE7, there, there, there are so many things that can go wrong in FE7. So many, especially when you hard Iron Man, it's awful Fucking because lords, uh, you have for first you have three lords, and one of them is good, and two of them are awful. And in many of the trap, like, you have this weird uh, dilemma in FE7 Iron Man. You can either bench Elliwood and Lin, yes. and just be forced to drag them along for certain chapters, where they will be put in danger sometimes. Yes. <laughs> or you can just go, fuck it, I'll just train them, because mm -hmm. I'm forced to use them anyway, and I don't want to, like, in the final chapter, I don't want to have to, like, put them behind all their units and risk having them be picked off by a morph. So you can either try to train them, which is a whole... Ugh, I mean, training Elliwood and Lin, that is an awful an experience <laughs> yeah. in and of itself, outside of an Iron Man. Um, and then you have all these weird defeat conditions, like Pent can die, Zephiel can die. It's just... FE7 is a horrible game for Iron Manning, it really is. It was meant to reset in, definitely. Like, Zephiel yeah. in particular is very offensive, because you almost can't even reach him. I have seen someone calculate that with, like, the right... Uh, like, if you just have, like, a base level Pent or something with Physic, move him a certain amount of tiles every turn, you can reach Jafar or Nino by a certain turn before they can actually die. And I've seen something mm -hmm. similar about Zephiel where you can almost always save him, but if you're streaming of an Iron Man, you're probably not looking that kind of stuff up in advance, you're just playing on, you probably just played the last chapter, you just want to get a move on. Uh, it's another stressful thing about streaming Fire Emblem multiple chapters at a time, is you don't really have the time to just take your time for every prep menu, instead you might end up forgetting something that also can factor I never do loss. that anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then Zephiel just gets reached by an enemy and just straight up dies, or you get Jafar or Nino or someone like that. Pent, I think, is less of an issue because he's just really good in the desert chapter, and he just he, he 
the chances of them dying are pretty low, but it can I think happen. I, I think I read somewhere that Pent has like a, I think it's like a six or seven percent chance of death or something, which is still too high. Yeah. But it's it's pretty it's, high for an overall game over, but you probably never see it. If, like if you Iron Man the game like a hundred times, you're gonna see it like six or seven times probably. But it yeah. might just be the playthrough. It adds stakes, but it's also very stupid. But then like Lin and Elliewood, I agree, are definitely like big. Like I had Elliewood die in Dragon's Gate. But it wasn't really like the game's fault or anything. I'll admit that was like my own fault. He's moving in in front of a bunch of cavaliers. What happened was, um, I put him in a choke point in the center. He was choking like a bunch of cavaliers. I moved low one off of it. He was like bulky enough to take all the hits. Moved Elliewood in because I wanted to get the the elixir from the boss. And he drops it. I was like, let me just get the kill right now with the rapier. And he killed him. But then on enemy phase, another cavalier came in, and Elliewood took like a bunch of damage. He could take like two more hits maybe. And then he crit the rapier on the counterattack, and it's like, oh shit, now he's exposed to more enemies. And the next guy came in, had a steel lance, and it would double him, kill him, and then mm -hmm. one more cavalier came in and he was dead. It was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> I lost, and I lost one before you, and it was it was sad times, it was sad times. And yeah, no, I... Yeah. <laughs> F7 sucks. I, I, I will say that I think there is one game that is even more horrible for Iron Manning, one that neither of us have attempted yet, but my designer Jake did. Oh, uh, Radiant Dawn? That is Ra Radiant Dawn. Oh, he yes. says that Radiant Dawn is uh, probably the worst game in the series to Iron Man. I can see that, yeah. Because uh... there are chapters where the green units can just cause a game over for you. Like, in particular, the Ronulf one with the Grail Mercenaries. Ronulf has a tendency to untransform and just run straight into the enemy lines. Wait, what chapter is that? The first one? The first one where the Grail Mercenaries, oh. Premier and Ronulf are attacking. Like, Ronulf has a sad tendency to transform, untransform, oh. and just die. Oh, not to sound like an elitist, uh, but I've never seen that happen ever. But I, I, that's because I usually... Apparently like... it happened to Jake. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. And uh, also, the the Dawn Brigade arc is just awful, because Micaiah... I mean, um, yeah, I did. I did, actually did for my 24-hour stream, which, to be fair, is my 24-hour stream, so I was probably a little tired. I did Raiding Dawn Iron Man, but I think I lost, like, one of the first chapters, in fact, because, uh, yeah, all of the Dawn Brigade gives you a game over when you die at first. It's pretty bad. Yeah. And um, I, I think the one that Jake actually lost on was the chapter where you only have Brahma and Nephany, you have to recruit Heather. And, yes, and yes, Nephany yes. Nephany has, like, terrible accuracy on everything, because she has a Steel Great Lance, and Brahma isn't, like, super... He's not, gonna, he's not like, a, a hoping missile either, so... And they have to land so many hits to get out alive. It's super stupid. Definitely meant for resets, yeah. Rain Dawn is yeah, awful. Yeah, no, I, I think in that chapter, you just have to, like, forego the houses and just run south. Yeah, that, that could be a solution. I mean, one of the houses is, like, an Iron Axe or something, or, like, a better axe for Brom that will make him more reliable. So it's just a matter of, like, do you want to give up the turns? You have to, all those stupid volunteers that have, like, RNG-based movement and everything, too. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah, it's, it's not good at all. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. Mm. Uh... Okay, we're like almost at a half hour. So I think like the last thing I want to ask is like, uh, over all these games that you've Iron Man and played, what do you think the worst death was for you? What, which one hurt the most? Or yeah, God, there's been so many. I know. <laughs> I'm asking you to choose from a lot, but I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it's it. So many, like, I, oh my God, now which one? Oh, I don't know, man. You like, uh, pick a couple that come to mind if you want, if that makes it easier. I mean, obviously, I was sad. I think I lost. Pent and by proxy Luis. Oh that was yeah, a, that was fun. That was a very dead. Like, I was. I didn't expect Pent to die of all people. <laughs> um, I think he fought like Luna Druids or something, like one Luna Druid and a sniper or something like that. You know, losing Jarrett really made me. That was really sad because um, I had already lost. I think I lost out on Sue or Shin. I, yeah, no, I I lost because I lost. I don't remember exactly how I it went. I do remember you lost Sue and you couldn't recruit Shin. I think. Yes, so I knew going to Sakai was not an option, and so all I needed to do was just to keep Jared alive to go to Ilya, oh, right. and then I placed Jared in range of a horse slayer on the bridge, oh. and I and what, the moment I did it, I realized that I fucked up, oh, yeah. and and I tried to rescue him, but no one had the con for it, and it's just <laughs> I remember just sitting there looking at him, just no know, knowing what would happen when I pressed end turn. I knew that I would get the best ending removed, but it's... Wait, didn't you already lose, like, Sophia or something before that? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, no, okay. no. I, I think Jared was the one where I lost Ilya. And of okay. course, I will also say that like, reaching Sephio and not being able to kill him and having the Physic Bishop heal him yeah. up, <laughs> that was... You know, I was so close, yeah. and then the Physic Bishop goes... All you had to do was keep Ray alive. I think if you kept Ray alive, you would have won that one. Probably would, yeah. <laughs> I was just so baffled when I saw you like move. You were like, okay, we need to go balls to the wall and kill every enemy here. And you just started attacking, but you didn't really 
make anyone protect Ray from dying. This is here. This is the mana just went up. I thought he'd be fine. Goodbye. Yeah, well, turns out mana pretty strong. <laughs> it, you see, they are they are really scary if, if they are, if they're allowed to attack you. It's just like most of the time when you go up against mana keys, you just snipe them from two range. Yeah. So you kind of lose the respect for them. Mm -hmm. Until you have to go up against them in melee combat, and yeah. then you realize just how fucking scary they are. A lot of the people who say, "Oh, I hope a remake of FE6 adds one to two range dragons." <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for some of the dragon bosses, that would probably be okay. For but Jan, do you yeah. realize how scary mana kits and FE6 would be if they had one two range? Yeah. I Holy think, crap. Yeah, their, their stats are insane. I think. Um... At first, when you mostly face Manakeets, at first they are very isolated, right? They're like the only enemy you have to kill in like a wide yeah, range. Yeah, it's on a throne. Like you can kill them with Lolina if you want. <laughs> yeah, it's like like the desert Manakeets are all alone basically, and then the the one in chapter twelve is all alone with besides like a couple priests. But then in chapter twenty two, you suddenly have to face them with like a bunch of other enemies alongside them, and that's when you realize, oh, yeah. I might be fucked actually. Yeah, for me, I would say the worst death by far for me is Elliwood that I described earlier because I actually lost an Iron Man through that, yeah. and that was terrible. Uh, I lost Shanna in the same playthrough because she was carrying Wendy around in the the 14x, the stupid guy in <laughs> chapter, and I forgot to like re-equip her weapon. She held she held a javelin while she was about to be attacked by a pirate, which is so much worse than an iron sword. Like you get doubled instead, you have open triangle disadvantage instead of advantage. Terrible, terrible decision making on my part. And because of that, I had to train up fucking Tate just to make it to Ilya. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, thank God you don't need to keep her alive for the guy. I will say for FE6, the part where you have to keep certain units alive and also keep the weapons intact to get to good ending, that's a pretty bad part of like Iron Man's. It's pretty hard to get to good ending yeah. in FE6. You have to play very carefully to get it. That's what, like one knock on it. But other than that, I think 6 is definitely one of the best games for Iron Man. I think 5 is one of the best games for Iron Man. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm so looking forward to FE5 Iron Man. Actually, just really want to play FE5 Iron Man right now. I'm like, damn, I haven't done this in ages. And I've done it like three times already, but like, fuck. I mean, it's your favorite game. Like, that's the thing when you wait. Yeah. I have the same thing with FE6. Yeah. So I can probably play it forever. Like, yeah. it's just how it works. Yeah. So after Conquest, are you going to do, like, Radiant Dawn then? Is that uh, the I don't know. I'll probably do a straw poll. I don't... To be to be completely honest, I don't want to do Radiant Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I, I were you, I, I would just want to play Radiant Dawn because it's Radiant Dawn. It's a fun game. But I can see... It's a fun game, but I, I think it's going to be an awful Iron Man experience because <laughs> I think I can play it for five streams and then just lose Micaiah randomly and just die <laughs> or have Dibarn die yeah. to a crossbow. It's just, I'm not looking forward to the heart-wrenching pain that it's going to bring me, but I think Radiant Dawn is probably the next. I think if I do a straw poll, Radiant Dawn is going to win out. Yes. Uh, I also think it would be fun to do, like, one thing that I actually really want to do is to Iron Man something uh, unorthodox, like a randomized Fire Emblem uh, or Fort Meng's Emblem or The Last Promise or some weird game. Yeah. But we'll see what people... I think, as long as I put Atelius game up on the straw poll, the Atelius game will win out. Yeah, I know it's the same as straw poll I was doing. Like, people voted Radiant Dawn and Path of Radiance really high, even though Path of Radiance, I think, is, like, pretty bleh as an Iron Man game. It oh, yeah, works, no, I, if, but, I, if, yeah. I, if, if it weren't for the ability to speed up Path of Radiance, I wouldn't have fun with it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, get out there. Play Fire Emblem Iron Man. They're, they're super fun. Yeah, yeah. I would like. I would also like to add. Like, I'm. I'm surprised to not see more people in the Fire Emblem community attempt Iron Man. I know maybe they'll. They're afraid of like being copycats or whatnot. But seriously, if you if you're a Fire Emblem content creator and you do screams, you should really try an Iron Man. Like, and Jake is taking up the mo uh, torch and like trying it, and I think he's having a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. And really, there's no reason why more people shouldn't try the Iron Mans mm -hmm. because it's. It's fun, it's exhilarating, it makes you appreciate fun. I want to spread this Iron Man virus, you know. Mm -hmm. like, um, I'm sorry for bad bad connotation <laughs> that right analogy, now, I realize. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, if you're out there, try an yeah. Iron Man. There you'll, is one on like YouTuber, it. I forgot your name, I'm sorry, but they asked on Reddit, like, hey, is my YouTube channel okay? And I gave it a look, and he actually did FE7 Iron Man. It was actually oh, fairly nice. well done. He did lose at some point, but he did, um, he did make an Iron Man. So, yeah. I'll... Post a link in the description and I remember because that's actually like one of the people who actually attempted it and it's yep. what it worked. It's pretty yeah, cool. Don't, don't be afraid of like being copycats, guys. It's fine. You don't need, you don't need our permission to play yeah, Iron Man. Yeah, it's okay. Man. I didn't I didn't sue Mangs when he started Iron Manning, so yeah. we, won't, we won't sue you in return. No worries. So yeah, that's that's all we gotta say for now. Um, thanks for watching, listening. See you guys next time. Peace, Reno. Bye.